Thanks for dropping by. Today we're going to be dealing with the Boscam backup camera. It's a wireless backup camera and the kit model is uh, the K1 model. Um, we're going to install this in uh, a vehicle today uh, and it's going to be a little bit of a, a twist uh, from the norm. We're not going to be installing this in the back of a pickup truck or the back uh, lights of a uh, uh, car or anything. We're going to actually be installing it in a trailer. Uh, it's going to be in a 1963 Santa Fe Cub, and that is a vintage travel trailer that we have. And when we're towing, we cannot see behind the trailer in the sense of having mirrors that we can, you know, rear view mirror situation. We have the outside mirrors, and we can see down the sides of the trailer. But there's always that little blind spot right in the back there. And it seems like I, I would see a car get back there and lose him and not really know where he is as far as uh, the distance between him and my trailer is concerned. And, you know, it kind of worries you about that. Uh, also, if you have a police officer pull up behind you and you don't see him, how do you see if the lights are flashing at you unless you have something to look back there? Um, so we're going to install this in that uh, in the vehicle and uh, I'll show you that what I'm going to do is show you how I routed everything. Um, keep in mind that this trailer is different than everybody else's trailers. It's just going to be some kind of an idea of what I did. But the installation of this thing is incredibly simple, very simple. I do want to I do want to have full disclosure on that the people at Boscam were kind enough to send this to me uh, for my, uh, my, my consideration. Um, I did look at it, tried it out in the truck. I actually mounted it in my truck originally just to see how it worked, and it worked just fine. Um, and uh, now I'm going to put it in the trailer because I think the trailer is going to be just perfect for it. My truck actually comes with a backup camera in it, so I don't need one there. But I can use it in this trailer. We'll see how it works. If it works great, it might be something you guys might be interested in doing. So, with that, let me get out here on the patio. I'm going to open this box up, spread all the, the parts out there so you see all the components and what have you, and kind of give you an idea of what they do. We'll be right back. All right, this is what you're going to find in the box. You're going to have the monitor, and you will have the extension cord. This thing will allow you to uh, read it quite a ways away from the cigar ladder receptacle. come with a transmitter and the antenna. The camera, which is mounted on the, on the license plate or anywhere else you want to mount it, you can get it mounted in, in uh, the vehicle you're going to use it on. But And it has a suction cup for the mount. And the mount is designed so that it can be mounted as such and bring this down over it. Or rotate this up and put it on the windshield and put and drop it on it. So it's kind of a unique little design there. Come with a few little extra goodies for tying things back. Definitely not going to be enough for our purposes. And instruction manual. Instruction manual is is okay, I guess. Um, the best part of the thing, I guess, the manual is is, is telling you how to program such things on this, some of the things on this. Now I did have to to for the trailer installation that we're doing. I did have to. Uh, buy a few other items. This is a 15 foot cable. They call it an extension cable, but unfortunately it really is not. This is what an extension cable would look like if you had different ends that would plug in each other and basically put this between it. It's got two male ends here, so you're going to have to pick one of these up too. And this is just an adapter which plugs in here and allows you to plug these into that. Alright, we're going to get out there and we're going to put this thing in the trailer. And it's just, I've just got the stuff routed through the cargo door opening there. And as you can see, I just, it's just running up to, up to here. And this is the neighborhood where it's going to be installed. Right in that area there. Probably right here. Or down here. Yeah, probably where it is there. You see there's a red light that's on it indicates that it is live. So it is transmitting. And you can see my truck is parked quite a ways from it. And you see we get a little bit of fading from the 
interference of stuff, it's where it's kind of fading out because I think I've reached its, its distance, but I'm like three times the uh, truck length away from it and I'm getting a picture here. Now these are the items I was talking to you about, the lines that can be taken taken out of it. Um, by clipping that one little green wire, this will disappear and it's going to be gone on mine too. So, basically, we know it works. And I will now pull it out and then permanently install it. See, now this is where it's going to get a little tricky. Behind that license plate lamp is an opening, and the cable is going to have to run under the skin and out over here. So I'm going to have to pull this apart, pull this all off, remove the staples and what have you that are along here and maybe across the top, enough to get it out so we can reach it, bring it down and then out the other end. Now right here, it will separate right here so that we don't have to put this big massive item through it. We just have to slide this through. Shouldn't be too bad. As you can see here, I've taken the license plate assembly down and there's a hole right back here with the grommet on it. And I've run that down this panel to this opening here. I pull the storage door off, the cargo door off of it, pull the staples out, and I've run it through here. I use a wire, actually fish tape, but you can just use a piece of, of stiff wire, even a coat hanger will work. You know, and you run it through, tape it on the end, and pull it on out here. Now I will be putting this all back together. There's no need for me to videotape that. Just wanted to see what we've done to run this under the skin here so it's not seen. And there's plenty of room under here. And I'll just have to be careful not to catch this with a staple or with a one of the screws that holds the panel in. And there's the camera. And that'll be right there. I'll show you when it's done. All right. Got the staples in here, right here, and right here, and the wire's running out through here. And I do have enough room between here and the, the casing of the uh, door that I can run this down inside. And all my electrical runs down under the floor here, a little trough, so I'll run it down in there. There's the hole for the screw, so we're going to miss it. And that's important, just got to be sure to avoid this. Okay, get the door on. Plenty of room back here to clear this. You're running this down through this trough. And the nice thing is, is this is that green wire I was telling you about earlier that you will snip if you don't want to have the lanes behind you, those uh, red, yellow, and green lines. It'll always be avail ac accessible so that I can just come in here and just wire this back together if I want to add them to it. Also, the switch will be right down in this area here. And this thing here has that little switch on it right here that will allow me to view the mirror or the, the screen on my dashboard as a mirror with it reversed or I can hit the switch and I can watch it direct like I'd be looking directly at the item at the uh, traffic behind me don't know which way it's going to be most comfortable for me I would think the mirror would be because it's going to represent what we're normally used to seeing but that's a, something that you can select yourself, and I will make a selection just once I determine which is best for me. And then, of course, the rest of this wiring will run across here. We'll run up here, and we'll run along here. And when it ends, it's going to end at the closet where I'm going to be putting this. As you can see, I've got it pulled in here. And I'm using the tie wraps to hold it in place. Now you don't want to put the tie wraps too tight until you know you've got the wire where you want it. Once you've got it where you want it, then cinch it down and then re-trim it. I got it. As you can see. Now, this is the area that has the switch for mirror image or direct image. And then this one here is for the backup lines. This is the thing I will be cutting. But you want to leave the stuff where you can get at it, so give you enough slack for it. And I have a trough down here where all this stuff runs. And I'll pull a little 
looser here so we get down out of the way for the cargo loading. And I've actually run it underneath here and started running it up along here, along underneath with this 110 line. Now for those of you who are going to say, well, you know, you're running this thing next to the 110 line, it is a camera line feed. Uh, is it going to be influenced by the electromagnetic field around this, this 110 as current's flowing through it? Well, guys, this camera will never be used when the 110 is used. I mean, it'll only be used when I'm driving, and I certainly will not have the 110 fired up at that point in time. So this is clean and safe, not a problem. As you can see, I've got it run all along here. And right back up in here is where I have it coming up through the floor of the cupboard. And you can see it right there coming up through the floor of the cupboard. And it's running along here. And of course this will all be cleaned up a little later when I get, get everything positioned the way I want it. But I did have to do something to, because the hole is so small there and I didn't want to make any larger holes. And you can see I've got two of these to go through that. What I ended up doing was pulling my 110 line. Which is not a problem. I put it in there, I know how to get it out, so I just took it out. You may opt to put a different, uh, do it a different way and cut a larger hole or what have you to get the stuff through there. And when I put it through, it is a very tight fit. And since the yellow is larger than the red, I put the yellow through first, then pull the red through, and then pull this bottom piece through. Now keep in mind, I'm just showing you how this particular trailer is wired. Your trailer may be different. And uh, when you uh, install yours, you could you know, just use some of the ideas I've got, but you just basically have to put your, pick your own route as to where everything is going. And this little thing, this little hammer has been a, a treasure to me for this, this job. Friends of mine gave me that as a Christmas, Christmas gift or a birthday gift years ago, and I use it all the time on the trailer. Um, it's small, but it pounds all those little nails in when I'm putting those uh, clamps down. Very, very small, very nice. Yeah, get it all back together here. We're in the the black ones we're looking at. Now this is going to have some wire that's going to need to be bundled up as the transmitter is right here. And I run the transmitter wire down. It's going to cut a hole through here to put the transmitter through, but decided not to. I didn't want to cut any more holes. Run it down here. And then my wiring will run down here outside to the plug on the trailer hitch out there and that'll give me uh, the power for my camera. That's the sweet thing about this. The only thing you, the only things you have to really do is make up your mind where you want to run things and then hook up two wires. I mean, can't be any easier than that guys. And the receiver inside the vehicle just plugged into the cigar lighter. Here, let me get this finished off and then I'll give you a shot of what I've done when I'm done. It's finished. And this is where I put the bundling of the wiring. Let's see if I can get this in here. There it is right there. And you see there's a switch right here. My finger is. Right there. It's a switch. I've actually got that wired in so that it is attached to my running lights. So that when I'm parked, I can just kick that on and my running lights on the trailer all come on. So those wires actually go down to the um, wiring harness that plugs into the back of the pickup truck when I'm towing. So I just tapped in right there and when I hit that switch, it ties it directly into the battery. Now if you look right there, you will see, find the switch. See the red light pop on? And that's the transmitter. So we're all set up. We're done. Now what I'll do is I'll just go out there and uh, get the receiver and plug it into a power supply. And we'll see what we get as far as pictures are concerned. Okay, get the unit installed in the trailer. I've got the dash piece in here. As you recall, this is the uh, dash piece I was showing you earlier. Um, the good people uh, at Boscam actually uh, did me a favor and gave me an upgrade to a uh, nicer setup because what I normally do right here is I'll actually put either my phone with uh, my navigation on it or I'll put my 
um, Magellan with my navigation thing on it, which meant I was going to either have to put another one over here or back on the window here or what have you. Um, it just it just wasn't what I wanted to do. I, di I didn't want all the stuff hanging in here. So what they did is they gave me this. As you can see, I've got it I've got it working at this point, and I'm just going to turn the lights off. I got the headlights on, and they're off. I'm going to turn back on, and there it is. It takes a bit of a delay to come on, but the act actual visual in the back there is almost instantaneous. You really can't tell the difference when there's movement behind you uh, you're, as you're backing up. It's not like it delays and you find out two seconds after you, you hit the thing that, oh, by the way, you're too far back. No, it's pretty quick. It's, it's pretty, pretty instantaneous. But this is pretty nice in the sense that I can take this off and it's just right up here, down to here, and the same on the other side. It has a rubber strap, which you just strap over your existing uh, um, mirror. And now you've got this thing here and you can see behind it. Now you can see the little lines here for the, that has the stop and the uh, red, yellow, and the green as you're backing up to show you when you're in the spots you need to be. And I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that little green wire back there. And when I do, this should all go away. So let's uh, go back there and see what we got. All right, here's the green wire that I'm gonna be cutting. So I'm not gonna be using this uh, thing in the vehicle as a backup item per se. I will be using it more as a uh, um, as a just a rear view mirror. I just cut it. Now let's go up into the trailer, or in the truck rather, and see what we've got. And as you can see now, the car cover fell over, but as you can see, those lines are gone. So we're doing pretty good there. I mean, what you're seeing here is just the car cover. But it went away. And all if I ever want it back on, I do just connect it back together. And I'll go back there and I will insulate those so that it doesn't uh, short circuit against anything. I do see an occasional jump on the screen here, um, to be expected. Uh, it is just a, a transmitted signal. And, and let's turn it off. Here it is, one more time. Oops, clamp's holding the wires down. Got it right here, the transmitter. And I've got it powered up underneath here to hooked into the wires which go down to the uh, wiring harness for the taillights and what have you. So when I do turn the taillights on, you, I will have a rear view mirror. If I want to use it to back up, I just turn the taillights on and I can actually see where I'm going and backing up. Not that that's going to be my main concern with this thing. I just really wanted a rear view mirror. I hated driving down the road and having to look through this window here and then hoping to see through that window there. Didn't see much. It was much many times I would go to make a lane change and uh, when I did, I... Uh, would end up finding a car coming up the side there that I couldn't see anywhere. It came around me from behind. So this is going to be great for safety. Can use it for backing up. And the thing is, totally removable if I decide I don't like it. So over time, if I have any trouble with it, I'll let you know. And uh, that's pretty much how it is. If you got questions, just write them down below. And I'll be more than happy to ha ask them. I will leave a uh, link to them. Let me get this thing around this way here. And I, I will leave a uh, link to these two items I got. Either one will work fine. Um, and there is a possibility of uh, doing this a little bit cheaper than this. this thing, these things here run in the neighborhood of $100 to $130, so that's a lot of money. Um, and I, I, I can appreciate that. But uh, they do have some that are wired. You can buy the wired ones, and for I think it's like twelve or thirteen dollars or more, you can buy a transmitter and receiver. Take the wiring out between them, hook the transmitter and receiver up, and then be able to do the same thing I've done here. So if you get a thirty-dollar backup camera set up, hook this transmitter and receiver up for another ten, twelve dollars, eleven dollars, something like that, you've got under fifty dollars, and you get yourself the backup camera that you want. Now I can't speak for how good it works. All I can tell you is what I saw online. Some guys are using it, say it works just fine for them. I can't vouch for that. I can vouch for this, but I can't vouch for that. Anyhow, 
Thanks for uh, watching, and uh, we'll see you next time around.